elephants are real. The ancient Sumerian text, uh, just in a very broad overview, basically tell us that more than 400,000 years ago that these Anunnaki came from space and landed on the earth in the Tigris-Euphrates Valley. They uh, began to set up a colony that they called Eden. According to Genesis, Eden, or Eden, is where Adam was created from dust and Eve from one of his ribs. Others, however, have a more high-tech version of how human life began. In time, needing manpower, needing workers, uh, jumped the gun on evolution uh, using genetic engineering. They took the uh, sperm of, uh, of one of the Anunnaki, mixed that with the ovum of a primitive humanoid, uh, probably uh, one of these uh, primitives that we are now finding uh, archaeological remains of in Africa, the famous Lucy. Um, and they produced a, a hybrid which uh, eventually became Cro-Magnon or, or modern man. Legend has it that when the Anunnaki came back after several thousand years to see how their genetic handiwork had turned out, they found the Earth females irresistibly attractive. It starts in the Bible. There you can read, in the beginning at Moses, when the sons of the gods saw that the daughter of men were beauty, they took them to wife. Later, out of the body's womb, giants came. So destructive were these titans that the Anunnaki who fathered them decided to destroy them. The apocryphal book of Baruch even tells us how many giants were wiped out. The book of Baruch says, then the Lord created the great flood, destroyed all life, which then was on earth, including the four 090,000 giants. As the story goes, some of the titans survived, but their reign as rulers of the earth was over and humans became the dominant species. Still, the giants live on in memory, like something deep-rooted that comes from the beginnings of our existence. For some, this is far more than a simple memory. Perhaps they are the ones who report more and more encounters with giants emerging from UFOs. These believers will assure you that the Anunnaki or celestial giants are coming back. Over the past ten years, Reported sightings of UFOs with giant occupants have been on the increase. Former director of the British UFO Research Association, Jenny Randalls, is familiar with these statistics. From an analysis of 15,000 encounters with beings, giant encounters have increased every single year since the 1965 period onwards, and we are therefore getting far more reports of giants being seen today than we did 30 or 40 years ago. The apocryphal books of Enoch are believed by many to be over 5,000 years old. In them, Enoch writes about how he was taken up to the heavens by two men of great height. In this celestial journey, he also talks of meeting those who from heaven to earth came. Two huge men appeared to me, the like of which I had never seen on earth. Their faces were shining like the sun. Their eyes, too, were like a burning light. Then they took me up and carried me to the first heaven. And they fly with their wings and do the rounds of all the planets. They led before my face the elders, the rulers of the stellar orders. These groups carry out and carefully study the movements of the stars. Enoch is taken up to the sky at least three times in our two days view we would say he was taken up to a mother spaceship there he has a discussion with what is called the highest whatever the highest is 
we would say maybe the commander of the spaceship. In other words, Enoch is what we would call the victim of alien abduction. This might seem like a far-fetched interpretation of a text written a very long time ago. On the other hand, present-day accounts by people who claim to be abductees are not so very different. The elders uh, were seven to nine, six to nine feet tall. They had white hair, pale skin, almost albino, light blue eyes, wore white robes, and had no shoes on at all. And they could uh, speak audibly, and they could also speak through mental telepathy. I've checked the owner's manual that came with my brain, and uh, uh, nowhere, even in the small print, does it say that all dreaming will be a, between the hours of uh, 11 p.m. and 8 a.m. That, generally speaking, it, it is. But what we know is the brain can generate extremely vivid images, extremely uh, real and lifelike things uh, that are hallucinations. But events in the Russian city of Voronezh can't be so easily explained. In this instance, there were at least 20 witnesses. Could they all have been dreaming the same dream in broad daylight? In September of 1989, something happened in the city of Veronezh, 200 miles south of Moscow, which caught the attention of the world press. For several weeks, strange lights were seen over the city. Then on September the 27th, it was reported that a spacecraft landed in one of the city's public parks, from which three alien giant figures emerged. Nothing remotely like this had happened in Veronezh before. Before coming to America in 1990, Ukrainian journalist Paul Stonehill covered the Veronezh story for the international press. Top Veronezh researchers of anomalous phenomena who uh, include scientists, geologists, and uh, also some military people, went to the site Im immediately thereafter. They were on the site on the 3rd of October, studying and collecting specimens. The encounter became a media sensation on national television and in the international press. Не было, ну уже хотя бы потому, что не было до сих пор в Воронеже событий подобных тем, а... Drawings of the landings by children who were there capture the event vividly. It attracted the attention of the media around the world because it was effectively endorsed by TASS, the Soviet news agency, who up until that time had certainly not given any credence at all to this kind of story. They had the chance to talk to many eyewitnesses, adults as well as kids, uh, policemen, school teachers, s uh, students, scientists who had uh, witnessed similar or even differently shaped UFOs. The underlying theme was that giant-like beings exited from strange-looking craft, did some research throughout Voronezh and were able to get back to their craft and fly away. For once we had a genuine large number of people all correlating with one another, describing the appearance of these giants. So it was not a case of you simply believe a witness or you don't. Here you couldn't fail to believe them because there were so many of them talking in concert. I was standing not far from the main road of the South Park and I saw this flying object at an approximate height uh, 200 of 250 meters. It stayed at the same height and did not move horizontally. I was very interested by all that because it could not be any kind of meteorological balloon. There was a squeaking sound. Perhaps some drilling tool was operating like it was boring a hole in the ground. The creatures started coming out. They did not look too much like humans. They were much taller than humans.